Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I give you some secrets on dodge and burn. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the incroyable city of Paris, France and the sunny city of Los Angeles. And I make two tutorials per week. If you want to get the raw files of this episode and all the past 205 episodes, all you have to do is subscribe to my daily newsletters by clicking here. And if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click here and you will be done. In last episode, I showed you how to make micro shots with any lens. Cool trick. This week, I'm going to talk to you about dodge and burn and how to make it awesome, less visible, but still very powerful. But first, let me announce that my full workflow 2015 course is out. Every year I do a course, which is like the best course of the year where I give you all my tricks and all the things I have learned and my full workflow, how it evolves. It's going to start off with a little presentation on that and then we get right to the tutorial. All right, so before we get into the tutorial, I just want to talk to you about my new Workflow 2015 course. What is this course? Well, the idea of this course was to teach you all the different techniques that I use today in 2015. Things change very much in photography very fast with new softwares coming out all the time, uh, new cameras, and also my taste. You know, I, I went from, uh, you know, very HDR to no HDR. I have different ways of doing digital blending. So let me show you a few of the projects. That's only about half of the projects that we're going to go over in that course. First, we're going to start off with this raw file. That's the before photo. And um, let me show you the after photo. That's the final result. Just a very simple raw file so that I, I go through the different, you know, settings in camera row or light retouching so you see how to get the best out of one row files. Then we're going to get into a more, much more complex project where we're going to take different photos taken during Paris to make this amazingly sort of video game, very dramatic look. That's something that's very popular on the web. And, you know, I do it sometimes for movie posters or or white not, you know, it's it's a really cool look, you know, very dramatic, uh, half CPR video game type of look. That's how I call it. Uh, then we're gonna go into doing something that's only possible now, which is Pano HDR. That's just some of the extract of the all the photos that were needed to make this panorama. It's all HDR, it's a panorama, and it's all made in Lightroom. And it's all one big huge raw file. You will see all the details in the workflow. Then we're going to go into the Louvre. I'm going to talk a lot about finding the right composition. I show you some of the, that's one of the photos we're going to be doing, but there's a lot more where I take you through the Louvre and a different composition I found, to, you know, to get the best out of the location that I had at that time. Then we're going to go into lone exposure techniques, and I'll show you how I blend different exposures different lone exposures, some very long like this one, some much shorter to get the best out of the sky and, the, and show different techniques and the idea is to get something like this. So that's blending lone exposures. And then we're going to go into different type of panos uh, that we're going to be doing in Lightroom CC and different tricks about making your panos pop. Of course, we're going to do some black and white. That's the before photo and that's the after photo. Also, we're going to do some crazy projects with sky replacements and making panorama at the same time. That's the final result. Uh, it's one of my favorite places in Montmartre, which I reach out again with different techniques that I did a few years back. So a lot of information about, you know, it's basically all the techniques I've been using all in about two hours and 10 minutes. It's over 20 projects. It's very to the point. We talk a lot about composition and retouching. And retouching. So check it out, my workflow 2015. Now, let's go and let me show you uh, what we're going to be doing today. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the secret of dodge and burn. Uh, and you will understand why. This is a photo that I shot four days ago. Uh, I rented a helicopter and I was in Big Bear. It's a very nice mountain that's about two hours away from Los Angeles. And um, the sky was not that amazing, but you know, I kind of like that's the raw file on retouch. And first, I'm going to do some little retouching by, if you know my workflow, by open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Then, of course, I'm going to do my black and white point. So uh, I use I use the Alt key to move toward the left, so to find a good black point, and then I use the same thing, the Alt key to move to the right to find a good white point. Okay, uh, and when I don't find one, or when it's too far, then I drop the Alt key and I just do it by, I, I eyeball it basically. So that's giving me already uh, the you know the basic contrast of the photo, 
and this is the before this is the after with the backslash key um, I think I want to get a, a little bit more out of the sky here so I'm going to do a graded filter and uh, you know lower a little bit the exposure and just you know maybe boost the saturation just for the sky because it was kind of a warm sky there and uh, then I'm going to look for the uh, the white balance let's go for shade and add a bit of magenta I think it's going to work fine on this one it's my you know my go-to settings for that okay so that's the basic thing uh, well not quite finished yet let's just do the let's go to details let's look at the noise level on this photo there's a bit of noise because I shot this by uh, by hand from a helicopter and by the way to give you a little trick on how you shoot by from a helicopter I put my camera at 1 80th of a second in manual mode at f4 f4 I was with the 2470 so I could not open more than f4 and then I put ISO auto so you know and it's the Sony A7S so the, it's got a good low noise uh, reaction and so this one was shot at 250 ISO so it's got a bit of noise so my formula is usually took the number 100 and I'm going to duck whatever I use in noise reduction so maybe 20 here that I'm going to put back in sharpening okay so it's going to be like about 80 well I can just enter it 80 in sharpening and 20 noise reduction and then I'm going to mask the, ma the yeah, you see how the grainy the sky is and that's because the sharpening is being applied everywhere by holding the alt key and moving the mask you can make sure that the uh, anything which is black is not going to get sharpened I only want the sharpening to be done on detailed things okay so that's better all right last but not least we're under about the profiles correction remove chromatic aberration and at this point I'm going to lower a little bit the exposure so we have a bit of uh, more density on the photo and we are ready to get into the secrets of Dodge and Bird. That's my basic retouching. Uh, okay, maybe let's add a bit of vibrant. But that's my basic retouching. I mean, it's a lot better than what it was before. I'll show you the before and the after. But to give it more depth and dimension, uh, we we need to do some a bit of Dodge and Burning because the way I was watching that photo from the helicopter was I could see all the details in the mountains. And I think the overall result is kind of flat. Now, the way there's basically two ways you can do a uh, dodge and burning and the whole idea of dodge and burning is you're just going to make some part of the photo brighter some part darker to enhance the fog or the clouds which is there give more depth you see if everything has the same level of light you see how this is more neat and clear than this so it gives depth you know but these three mountains are a bit very similar so one thing you can do is use a brush uh, you know have a flow and density around uh, 70 and start you know maybe brushing you see here there's some fog and start adding a bit more fog and it works pretty well the only problem you have with that is that it's going to make sometime and i see that in photos people can see the dodge and burning too much it's going to be a bit too much visible so when i'm lazy i do it in lightroom but i'll show you a way you can do it in photoshop that's a bit more professional if you really have an image that you really want to print in big you want to give to a gallery you think it's really like a winner photo and you want to really give it depth then there is no substitute to go into photoshop so edit and edit in Photoshop CC 2015 because Photoshop is still the software for you know landscape retouching and dodge and burn and things like this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an empty layer and I'm going to put that, that empty layer uh, let's see I, you see here there is fog I want to add some fog so I'm going to take a brush okay let me erase this I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to make uh, my brush opacity around 35 percent my flow like 35 35 white as the foreground color and normal as the uh, you know as the blending mode okay and here there is a little bit of fog that I want to get in but you see now the result is that it is even worse now than we had in Lightroom it's very visible however and that's the ma that's the secret. the secret is coming now if you double click on on the layer style you have this option it's called blend F and here you have this option of underlining layer so we have white here but if you move that slider to the right you see how the white disappears that's because it's basically saying that um, it's gonna blend if the the data which is the white is uh, you know lighter than this point so if you go too much uh, this uh, disappears now if I you see 
so try to go where your white is disappearing, okay? And then press the Alt key to break that tr triangle, okay? And now, basically what's happening is that the white is only going to affect what is this in this range here. So it's, it's not going to affect the darker part. Uh, it's only going to affect, the fog is only going to go onto the brightest part, making your dodge and burn much more uh, invisible to the eyes. Let's see before after see we did add some dodge and burn let me show you the before that's the before doing the airplane if and that's the after you see so now we added fog but we had it in a much more natural way and once you have this you can try you take the brush back and now you've got the the blend if mode which is set and now you can maybe add some more fog here or here and it's going to do the same thing okay now if you do something you're seeing it's too much visible like here which I think is, well, it's actually pretty good. I'm actually gonna leave on, but you see how it did not go to the mountains. It only went on the back. That's because of the blend F. You see, it made a perfect masking here, which you cannot really do in Lightroom. You can use the auto mask, but it doesn't give as good result. So that's one thing, but you can also use this action uh, to make s more subtle dodge and burn. So I'm gonna call this the normal dodge and burn. Dodge, it's actually dodge. Dodge makes things brighter. And burn makes things darker, okay? Um, okay, I'm gonna make one more layer that I'm gonna call soft light dodge, okay? And you can put this into soft light, which is a blending mode. And same thing here, you can add, I'm gonna add a bit of fog here. So already with soft light, what's happening is that it's much more subtle than if I put it into a normal mode. It's already better, okay? Huge difference. But it's still kind of visible, and if you, I want it to be just on the brightest part of the photo, you can sp still play around with the if blend. So here, let's move this, okay, and let's press Alt. Just move it around so you have something. And you see now how the fog only affects here and not on this mountain? That's pretty cool. Okay, and you can also use it to make things pop with more details. Uh, okay, well, on this one, I'm going to finish my fog. And you see how I'm painting, and it's not going on the foreground mountain, but only on the back, making it much more natural. So that's kind of cool. And I'm just trying to, what I'm trying to, to do is uh, make a separation between this mountain and this mountain. So I'm going to make this a bit darker, uh, a bit less opacity. But already, it's got more dimension. We can also use it to, to uh, make things pop even more. So I'm going to add another layer that I'm going to call pop. This one, I'm going to take a brush, maybe a bit stronger. I'm going to use an opacity of 50 and flow 50, and I'm going to paint some white here on some of the white part of the, of the mountains here. Okay, and let's use the blend if option again. Let's move this around. Okay, and let's break it in two. And see, it's like almost like adding snow. Okay, you can move this, to, see, if I move this to the left, uh, the white is going to go on very dark. It's going to get mixed up with very dark places, uh, dark trees. If I move it to the left, uh, to sorry, to to the left, it's it's going to get mixed up with dark places. To the right, it's only going to affect lighter places, which is kind of cool. So you decide where you want your dodge to affect. But now, I, I brought in more details on the foreground, just a little bit, you know. And now I can just add more. I can paint over, and the blend if is still active. And I think that's really one of the secret of, you know, doing good dodge and burning uh, for landscapes. And uh, it's, it's just a really cool way. Now, if I want to make the sky a bit nicer, uh, I can also do a different technique, which I really like to do, is you press uh, Q. Q is going to get you into the quick mass mode, uh, get your opacity at 100, the flow at 100, I'm sorry, make a big brush by holding the control and the Alt key, you got a big brush, and you make a smooth selection of the sky. What you see in this red is just a selection. I'm going to press Q, and it is going to become a selection, it's an active selection. With the active selection on, I can go to Curve, and here is my curve, and I can play around with it. I can go into uh, reds, for example, and add some reds or take out some reds. So you have to be very gentle. I'm going to add some reds in the middle, Okay, green, uh, let's see, I'm going to take out greens, so, or maybe not even touch the greens. Go into the blue, 
maybe add or retract some blue and just see what it gives and if you like it. And then you can go to the RGB one and maybe just, you know, take a add. There is some preset there. Let's add a medium contrast. Okay, or darker just to see what it gives gives us, you know. And this way I'm only retouching the value of the sky. Uh, this is the before, this is the after. I think, hmm. Let's look at something like this. And with the same selection, you can just, you know, go to uh, U in saturation and just maybe add a little bit of saturation. Not so much, but just, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not on a mask, so I can just take the Alt key and drag and drop that mask. Replace mask layer, yes, so we have the, so it's, so that the uh, UN saturation is only affecting uh, the sky. So I have, not that I have a selection, I can play around with it, I'm just gonna add a bit more, because it was very warm and somehow it lost, got lost in the raw file, but I like the very warm sky. Maybe it's a bit too much, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit and you can play around with the lightness also. So, voila, that's just two little curve, uh, you know, it just makes a good selection of the sky. And you know, and I did it on the top of what I did in Lightroom. That's so that's kind of burning the sky, and here it's dodging uh, what is there. Now you can also use the same technique to do some burning. So we can, I'm going to call this burning, and then on the, I'm going to take a small brush, like you know, 30% flow, 30% dense uh, opacity, uh, roughly. Take black as a foreground color by pressing X. Okay, and, uh, oh sorry, my flow is not right. Okay, and I can move in and, I'm um, sorry, lost my tool here. I'm, I'm gonna move in with the brush. So I've got a small brush and I'm painting in black and I can just add, I can burn some of the mountain, but the problem, as you can see, is that it gets, it's very visible, you know, like, and basically the idea is just, I wanna add some uh, details to the mountains at some parts, but not every part. I'm trying to uh, make some parts a bit darker, especially the parts which are already dark, but not everywhere. Okay, now of course I can put this into uh, soft light, like blend mode, soft light, blend mode, but it's still very visible. Okay, now if I use, if I go here and I play around uh, with this slider or this slider, you have to see, okay, this slider and break into uh, Alt and just play around with it and see if you can get a more natural result. And the idea is, the whole idea of dodge and burn is you have to go very gentle. Just play around with this until it blends better. See, before, after. Now the dodge and burn is much more subtle. We just gave a little bit of more uh, details to the mountains, you know, a little more. And now I can use the same value uh, because the blend if mode is, is good there. And, and apply it to the mountains, you know, to some of the mountains here, you know, in some parts. And because the blend if is active, it's, uh, it's gonna, you know, blend very nicely. And I just, you know, it's like a painter job. You're tr just trying to uh, go over the limitation of raw files. And the idea is not to overdo it too much, you know. If it's too strong, you can, and it's a bit strong there, I can lower the opacity. You know, and it's true, more as I grow as a photographer, more I try to go for for pretty, uh, you know, how do you say, uh, nat more natural results. So I can take all these layers that we've done, the burn and dodge layer, and press Command J, like group, and now it's in a group that I'm going to call DNG, Dolce and Gabbana, dodge and burn, and that's the before, and that's the after. And this was retouch in Lightroom. This was our starting point, before and after. You see how we give depth to the photo? Uh, let me show it to you in full screen. And uh, voila. And we get we gave a lot more depth to the photo. And it's, uh, it's a really cool trick to just get you dodge and burn to the next level, a bit more realistic and a bit nicer. Hope you like this trick, guys. And hope you check out my workflow 2015. I've put months and months of work into it. And I'm sure you're going to learn tons of stuff. Thank you so much for being there. And I will see you in another episode. <laughs>